you will follow you and tackle it. Judges chapter 6 reading from verse 25 and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him unto Jerubal that is unto Gideon take thy father's young bullock even the second bullock of seven years old and throw it down the altar of Baal that thy father had, had and cut down the grove that is by it and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this uh, rock in the other place and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice of the wood of the grove which thou hast cut down then Gideon took Ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him, and so it was, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city that he did not do it by day, that he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down, and the grove was cut down that was by it. And a second bullock was offered upon the altar that was built. And they said one to another, who had done this thing, when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, had done this thing. Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he had uh, cast down the altar of Baal, and because he had cut down the grove, I was by it. And Joy said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal, that means will you contend for Baal, instead of Baal contending for himself? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let him be put to death. The person that will now go and contend for Baal, instead of allowing Baal to contend for himself, that person should be put to death. If he be a God, let him plead for himself, because one has cast down his altar. Now, a secret of uh, somebody being successful in this life as a Christian is having understanding, having proper understanding of what is being taught, the truths of the Bible as being revealed by the Spirit of God. If you do not have understanding, of what is being taught, you will not apply, you will not apply it, and then if you don't apply it, you will not benefit. Nobody can benefit from what he doesn't understand. There are very many people that admire men of God, admire people who are, who are charismatic, who have, uh, who have some prowess, and uh, they are right. Uh, it's good to do that, but by themselves, they do nothing. They just sit idle. They don't even want to understand anything. They are always asking for prayer, They're always running to some person. Sometimes they are always complaining. And when their problems become big, they will begin to 
begin to push the blames, thread blames, begin to push their big push blames to other people, and they begin to fault the church, and they begin to say it is the past. They will begin to say it is so-so brother and so on and so forth. That's because they refuse to understand. This thing that we read here, and you were told to remove the things that connect you to Satan. It's not only those things that will have been done in times past or done by, by, by your people, which you were not there. You were not there when they were done. And uh, I can tell you that those things that you were not party to, they have no right to stand against you. If you have understanding, I do not know what, I don't see any reason the thing that Ohanebo, my grandfather did, and his father called the Lekwashi. I don't see that the reason they should follow me. Because I was not there when they did it. There is a rule that you have to understand. And that rule is written in the Bible where it says God is jealous. He will punish to the third generations. Even the children and children's children. But there is a clause that is there of them that hate me. What does it mean? If you are from a family and that family is promiscuous, you are from a village or a town or a clan, and that clan is promiscuous, that is, immorality is nothing, and you don't reject it, as you grew up, and you say you became a Christian, and you come to church, and you didn't reject it, you didn't distance yourself from what was there before you were born, what is in the gene of your forefathers. Now your children can turn promiscuous, and you can turn promiscuous because you didn't reject it. You didn't say, not me, God forbid, this is evil. But if you do, the spirit that caused that thing will not come to you. Because you have no hand, you have rejected it. You are, you are no more attached. Now, that thing that, that, that clause that says, of them that hate me, that is of them that continue, that are plowed, are plowed, are plowed what their, their forefathers do, what is in their gene, what is in the, in the life of uh, their village people. The person become, is proud of it. The person is say, you know my people, you know my people, and you know my family, and what the person is boasting about is something wrong. Now you hate the Lord, you hate righteousness, and then what that thing yielded unto the people, will yield, it will yield unto you. That is the rule of God. Because if you go further in the prophets, you find that the Lord said, whatsoever a person father did will not be credited to the son. So long as that son distances himself from it. So the issue of ancestral uh, this and that is very simple. It is that you will reject whatsoever that was done, which you were not party to. And right now you know it and you are saying away with it. I don't have any hand in it. 
I don't applaud it. I distance myself from it. And that's the end of it. There are more deadly uh, things that connect you to Satan. They are more deadly. And these are the things that I'm going to read and talk about. The things that will connect you to is more deadly. The things that are found in you, not the things that are found in other people. I hope that somebody has understood what I said concerning what other people did. Let me, let me tell you, let me show you, before I go to that scripture, let me show you the mindset that I carried from childhood. And I discovered that it's good mindset. And then I carried it, and when I came into Christianity, I continued with it. What mindset? If you said that our people are supposed to be doing like this, and I find that thing not good, I will not do it. If you say our people do not eat this kind of food, and I find that food delicious, that one is your business, I will eat the food. I give you a practical instance. I was Growing up, when I began to know my left from my right, around 1950, 1951, and then we were told that my immediate family do not eat. There is a particular kind of uh, yam, it's called ona in Igbo. What is it? Okay. Now, and the thing was very, a delicacy. There then some, some white, some yellow. And then the people, other people in the village and in the other family, you know, would eat the something and they would make, a, 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 I mean, wonderful something. And then they said, my immediate uh, family does not eat it. And I began to think. My grandmother was alive. My mother was there. My, mother, my father had died. And everybody around wasn't it. And they said that even if you enter the farm where this honor was growing and it touches the body, that it will bring a crocker. And it was so for them. But I said, not for me. And I was only about nine years. I said, I do not know why these people are rejecting this del delicacy. And I don't subscribe to what I don't understand. So I went to some place and they cooked dinner and I went and ate it. Did you hear what I said? I was not born again when I rejected the tradition that was useless. And God saw that. And so that tells you then that if you are talking about um, our fathers did this and did that, that one is your problem. That's the way you separate yourself from evil. And the consequence of evil that another person did will not affect you. Did you hear? Yes, Did you understand? Yes, if your husband begins to talk against church, you will tell him, me and you are not the devil. What you get, what you, what you, what you pluck, you carry on. But if you begin to say, it's true. It's true now. Then, what the person has plucked, you will carry with the person. Are you listening? Yes, sir. There are those that in church, they defend their children. I don't defend anybody. Hear it. I don't defend anybody. I don't defend the wife. I don't defend child. I don't defend anybody. I defend Christianity. 
If you do wrong, you do wrong. What you get from me, what you see, you take. But there are very many people they defend their children, defend their husband, defend their wives, defend when they see them going wrong. They defend them, join them, begin to talk. So let me not be, belabor the point. Let me show you the more dangerous thing than what is distant. The more dangerous thing, John's Gospel, chapter 14, the second to the last verse. Let's read it together. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world, the ruler of this world, whom did Jesus Christ call the ruler of this world? Who gave him to rule? Who gave him to rule? Adam gave him to rule. God had given Adam to rule, but he sinned and then transferred the authority and the rulership onto Satan. Jesus is the person that said the prince of this world, the ruler of this world. That is the person that is going about influencing people and then sort of begin, be, being in charge. Listen to me. Yes, being in charge now, if you submit yourself unto anybody that you should rule you, shouldn't the person rule you? You remember Jacob and Esau? And now, who should rule? But then, what happened? He, he said, what am I doing with this rulership? Give me the, the, the wonderful porridge. Give it to me. Give me the pepper soup. What, what do I, what do, this uh, uh, bet right of a thing, what does it mean? Later on, now he knew what it meant. And then, Jacob began to rule him. So man submitted to Satan, and Satan began to rule. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, the ruler of this world is Comet. Comet didn't say came. Comet means comes. Comet means what? In present day uh, English means what? Comes. The, the ruler of this world comes, but has nothing in me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I want you to think. Who made this comment? Who is Jesus? You see, let's take our time to know that this Christianity is not a joking thing. It's not a joking thing. All the people are joking are wasting their time. You know, there are some things that I see, I say, wow. The, the people are joking. People, jokers have become men of God. And they deceive the people. Jesus that was not born the way you and I were born. Your mother met with your father and you were born in sin. And I was born in sin. We had the gene of sin. Jesus Christ didn't have the gene of sin. He didn't have the gene of immorality playing in him. He didn't have the gene of lying. He didn't have the gene of pride. He didn't have the gene of arrogance. He didn't have the gene of anger. He didn't have the gene of hatred. He didn't have the gene of quick temper. He didn't have the gene of stealing. He didn't have the gene of lying. Didn't have it. But all of us here, without exception, you were born with the gene of one error or the other. True or false? Some were born with plenty. Some were born with few. And that person was filled with the Holy Ghost to the brim. Let me ask you, who among you here is filled with the Holy Ghost to the brim? Me? You? 
Even there are people here who are not even, who don't even have the earnest of the spirit, not to talk of being have baptized with the Holy Ghost. And the person that didn't have the gene, sin gene, eh, and was filled with the Holy Ghost without measure, he say, was saying, the prince of this world came and was, came to peep to see whether there is anything that belonged to him that wasn't found in Christ so that he would give me sliding tackle by that thing. Are you understanding? Yes, sir. If you want to go to church, go to go to church. Yes, sir. Like watchman. Yes, if you want to listen to pastor, listen to good pastor. Look at the person that said the prince of this world come. Now, if the, the ruler of this world came going near Christ to peep, to know whether there was anything that he could find in him by which he was going to give him a sliding tackle. Now, he will not spare you. <laughs> Brethren, men and women, let's be wise. He will spare you. He will fear you. I'm asking you. He will fear you. Now let me ask you. Did you not know that he said to him. Now he took him. He didn't take him physically. He didn't take him physically to the high mountain. No. He just is like, like a movie. Like a scene opened. You know how you will be watching this thing. He had the capability of making a kind of movie. And then the scene, the scene opened. Another scene came. And now that was the whole world. And all the glories of the whole world. And he said, you see, all these things. So when you hear he took him to the high mountain, you think that he took Jesus by the hand like a little boy and took him to the high mountain. No, he created a scene. And then like a movie, like a movie now, this chapter opened, the other one rode in and now this other one rode in and said, see all these things I will give unto you if you will just bow down and worship me. I am asking you, who was he talking to? Jesus. Did you know Jesus earlier? Yes, sir. Did you know that Jesus Christ would have been the son of God? Yes, sir. Did you know, when he was the archangel, did you know that Jesus was his superior? Now, that is the person he's telling, he was telling this thing. Did he mean it? <laughs> now, he will not fear you. If he was able to be tempting and to be looking for something, now you human being, you will now think that he will not be coming and looking for something. Looking for something that is inside. Listen to me. You are undoing it may not be what your grandfather did. It is what you are doing. That is what he, that is the, the bar, the author of bar that you need to take out. Are you hearing me? Yes, now, your own author of bar is you are quick-witted. Immediately a thing happens, you talk. Wah, 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 wah. You, in fact, you will talk and talk for two hours. That's an altar of Baal. I immediately you hear something, you talk. No investigation, no wanting to hear from another person. You talk. And you talk and you get angry and you talk and bombard everybody, curse everybody. Cost church. Everything. That's the, yeah, that is uh, yeah, yeah, altar of Baal. The altar of Baal could be your anger. Your anger. When I was not born again, I had an altar of Baal. And what was it? If you offended me, the kind of the kind of language that will come out of my mouth. Oh my God in heaven. The kind of cursing that I will place upon you. 
will be as if I had the power to bring the fire of God upon you. God punish you. And one of the days, down there, St. Mary Sajegula, I, I reacted like that. And then one, one, guy, one girl turned to me and said, Brother Aloysius, are you God? How can you open your mouth and, and, and curse people like this? Are you God? And I became ashamed of myself. Neither the guy nor myself was born again. That was my altar of bath. Remove that altar of Baal from you. Reject it. You have the altar of Baal, the tendency to tell lies. Remove it. The devil comes. After he comes now, he's going to come tomorrow. He's going to come in two weeks' time. The author of Baal is a be immoral tendency. The author of Baal may be fashion tendency. You have, a, <laughs> I heard of a lady recently, a case occurred. And as we were investigating the case, now what I heard about the lady, the person was even a leader, leading people. In the, in the higher institution, woman leader. Now, but what I heard was that she said that even when they made me a woman leader, I didn't believe the, the Washman doctrine on, 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 on dressing. But they put the thing upon me. I let them now. That's what the person said. It could be that somebody has the altar of power, and uh, that is about fashion. What is, uh, what is making the person crazy is fashion. It could be that you want money. You want money. Could be that you want beauty, outward beauty. Young man, it could be that your altar of bar is laziness. You don't want to do anything. You want quick money. You want to get money. You want to do business. Give me money. I want to trade. So think about what the author of bad is, which you need to give up. So that when he comes, looking inside your heart, you will not see anything with which he will follow you and tackle you. I've told watchmen, time will outnumber that Satan is not in a haste. Satan is not in a haste. If he sees a thing in you and it is being talked about and you leave it there, he will, he will salute you and go away. And go and make what is called a long term plan. Long term, T E R M. The plan will hook. That trap will hook in 10 years' time. And it begins to scheme. Begins to scheme. Now, you are somebody who doesn't want to hear. When we are talking about the will of God in marriage, going according to rule, you say all oh, these rules are too much. All these rules are too much. You begin to 
you begin to go against it. Look, these truths are too much. Shouldn't somebody, shouldn't somebody be able to find whom to marry? He will salute you. And we'll begin to plan it. Listen to me. It is in the kingdom of this world. It is among the children of God. It is among Christianity that there is no plan. The devil's plan. And then he will instigate somebody that will be to your liking. And the person will stray into church. Man or woman. Because you know they hear. And then the next moment you connect to the person. Now, the next moment, you get married in church. But then, after six months, after three months, after five months, then you begin to now say, what happened? You begin to now say, what happened to me? What have I done? And then you begin to complain. But it is because of what he saw in you that he used to make the plan. If you want to go to heaven, be an obedient person. Every rule in church is in our interest. I said this one and I close. From time to time, I make this statement. I didn't cause anybody any problem, any headache since I became a child of God in February 1975. It was not because I became a leader. I wasn't a leader from 1975. I was led. I lived with brethren. And none of them can say I was a fault he found in me or lived and then had to exchange words one day. Think about that. Because I took my time. I didn't come to church to create problem. I came to church to cleanse myself to go to heaven. My focus was going to heaven. I didn't focus on ruling people. If I knew that, listen to me, if I knew that leadership will bring, would bring me the fire that it brought me, I would have rejected. I used to tell you God. I didn't come to rule. Unfortunately, you find people today who say they are pastors. They come to rule. They hold on to rulership. They don't have the quality or the standard as idols. They won't give way. There are those who come and their own is to, uh, uh, to correct everything. For everything you have opinion. So if the devil sees that you are such a person, listen to me. He will tell you and will make you see many, many things that you do not like. And you will talk and talk and talk and talk. Many, many things that you do not like. Cleanse yourself. Be, a, be somebody that came to church to go to heaven. Be somebody that is saying, I want to be an example. I want to be somebody that can be looked up to. That's all. And if you do that, you are a champion. You are God's, God's favorite. Simple. If you go home and tell your husband, your husband tells you, look, no more wahala. From today, no more wahala. We must go to heaven. And then you resolve and say, if I do you anything that is not wrong, if that is wrong. If I say anything that you don't like, tell me. And the person says, if you do anything, tell me. If, I, if you do anything, if I do anything, tell me. And two of you mean it. Then you will discover that you will achieve miniature heaven on earth. 
But when you have people who don't care about going to heaven, who do not have the awareness in their minds going to heaven, now you will see that they will be in terrible commotion. Oh my God, have mercy upon me. This thing that I am telling you is the way. Make up your mind that the devil does not find anything that belongs to him inside you. That's the altar of Baal that you need to throw down. If you throw it down, it comes to look nothing. Tomorrow it comes to look nothing. Two weeks time it comes to look nothing. What is he going to do? What is he going to do? He will walk away. He will walk away. And your prayer will say to heaven. Simple. You ask me, is it a possibility? Yes. Possibility. Be a person whose mind is sound. Make sure that your life, listen to me, does not constitute a problem and uh, a, 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 a means of offense. Are you there? Yeah. Your life, the way you talk, does not constitute an offense. Do you know what? If when we come together in church, and then you are here, you are there, you are there, you are there. You are commanding everybody, you are ruling everybody, you don't listen. You know that that will become offensive unto the brethren. And somebody will be saying, what kind of woman is this? What kind of brother is this? Every now and again, I know, I know, I know. What do you know? And you will make the other person now to talk. Or... Listen to me. You can create an offense. Look at how people create offense for me. That is, if there are people that are jokers, they are employed by a bank or by a construction company or by a brother, and they will not do their work diligently, they cost me offense. Did you hear what I said? Or they employed you to teach in a, a secondary school or primary school, even government secondary school or university. And you will not do that work. You are an offense to me and an offense to God. What do you mean? Why do you earn the salary? A brother gave you, these are the things, people that don't care. A brother gave you some money. A sister gave you some money. And then use this money, return. And then the next moment you forgot it and tell stories. And use it anyhow and the money is lost. Are you not an offense to that brother? These are the things we are seeing in church. But church should be a place where people live their lives. Listen to me. Cautiously. Where people live their lives cautiously. Which you think is possible. I don't see why it's not possible. Where people live their lives in friendship. Somebody gave you this book to read. A book that the person cherishes. A textbook, for instance. And now you took it. Or you went and borrowed it for somebody. And you took it. And then by the time you are returning it, some pages have torn. The back has become dirty. Are you not an offense? Will the person be happy when you return the book? I'm asking you. 
Somebody gave you his motorcycle to use to go to some place or gave you a car to use to travel to the east. And by the time you came back, the fender has spoiled. You have, because it is not your car and you don't put any money, you go boom, boom, boom in all the bad roads. But if it was your vehicle, you will try to select the, the road. Now the person comes back and is asking you, why this thing? He said, the road is bad. You have caused him offense. Another time will he give to you? And he will have the tendency to say, look at this brother. And then he has made me to begin to spend money that I didn't begin to spend. Listen to me. Let's live our lives to not to cause offense to anybody. That's all. And you can. Did you hear? Yes, sir. You can. You can. You can mind what you say. Before you say it, you do what? You think about it. Before you use that word, think about it. Before you say it to your children, think about the word that you are using. And if you see that you have just, the word has just fallen out of your mouth, but that word is, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, like an arrow. What do you do? Be humble enough to say, I am sorry, son. Withdraw the word. Be humble enough to say to your husband. Be humble enough to say to your wife. Be humble enough to say to your mommy. Mommy, I'm sorry for making that statement. Now, let me ask you. Let me ask you. If somebody just says, get out. Don't talk to me like that. Get out. And then realizes that, ah, how can I say to my husband, get out. Or how can I say to my wife, get out, as if my wife is a dog. And they called the wife inside and said, very, very sorry for that stupidity. Let me ask you, will that wife like this man? Yes, sir. Sure. Ah. <laughs> Watch my people. Pray that nothing happens to me. You know? Because, because <laughs> the thing that God is giving me, percolating in my head, there are too many. Yesterday night I was praying. And I came to a point as I was praying. I remembered that God gave a wife to Adam. And Adam said, eh. This is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. Meaning, ah, this is part of me. Oh my God, I appreciate it. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Ah, but as I began to think of marriages this day, I began to see that men, instead of saying this is the bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, the men are saying this is my slave. <laughs> This is my house boy, housemaid, and the housemaid of my brothers. <laughs> but did you see what Adam said? What is your wife to you? What is your husband to you? Listen to me. To go to heaven from Nigeria is not the same thing. Uh, to, with going to heaven from America. <laughs> Listen to me. Nigerian roads can make you to trip off. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Now the roads, the way they did it, quick, 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 quick. And then the anger is inside you and you came back to the house. And your wife had not finished the food. He says, stupid woman. <laughs> but the woman did not do you anything. It is what the rose did. It doesn't happen in America like that. So going to heaven from Nigeria is different from going to heaven from America. We are coming. I will live to tell you the mysteries of the kingdom. 
so that we take your time. We are in Africa. And going to heaven in Af from Africa is a very Hercules task. Because Africa pre pre presents you with terrible circumstances. So you need to tighten your belt so that you don't run off. <laughs> Let me stop there. I want you to pray. Sing that song again. Teach me, Lord. Draw me. Show me your way. Sing that song again. Hold my hand. He has to hold our hands because the road is rough. you. Christ Jesus is interested to make a church, a rapturable church. He's interested. He cannot be more interested than he. I cannot be more interested than he. He wants you to go to heaven. He wants me to go to heaven. That's the truth. In Jesus name we pray. 
Before I pray, let me ask you these questions. Do you think that Jesus has given up on the church? God has released the whole world to Satan. <laughs> I'm asking you. He says, take them all. If he said that, the death of Jesus Christ is no use then. In fact, Jesus Christ can rise and fight him. If he says, Satan, take over the whole world. Now let me ask you. Do you think that God is more interested to dwell with the angels than to dwell with human beings? God is more interested in dwelling with the human beings that served him in this world and went through tough times. Did you hear me? Yes, the angels never suffered persecution. The angels never became ill in order to come for prayers. They never needed deliverance. They have not been pursued by Satan. All the difficulties what we're having as we are coming to church, the angels don't, come, they don't have difficulties. Listen to me. You go from bus to bus and trouble all the while. The angels, if they want to come to church, do they enter bus? So God is more interested in us than there. The apostle said, when we arrive heaven, we will rule angels. Because God knows the people that have suffered in serving him. God is interested in you coming to heaven. Take note of it. Know the truth. Jesus Christ said, little flock, fear not. It is my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So don't ever give up and say, it's, it's, it's like I can't make it. It's like the whole thing is weighing down upon me so much. It is like I have committed this sin and God cannot forgive me. Who told you that? I'm asking you. Who told you that? How come that you believe error and take it to be true? God is interested in each and every one of you. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. I said God is interested in each and every one of you. I want you to say to yourself, God is interested in me. And God is interested in you. Say it again. Jesus is interested in me. But that is the truth. You are not just saying it. That's the truth. I say it is the truth. Let me ask you another question. Do you think who is stronger? Satan and God. Who created who? Now... Do you think that the stronger person can just keep quiet? Eh? And then the person that less strong will now take all the people. No, let's be reasonable. Some person that uh, dreamt a dream or saw his own revelation. And then uh, some people are even carrying it and believing it. He said that uh, the names of the people... The whole of Nigeria, the names of the people that their names are in the book of life are 153. I said, nonsense. Rubbish. Who gave you the information? Rubbish. Rubbish. That's a lie. Only 153. Ah, if that is the case, now I will join Satan. So in that day we will fight because that looks like he's stronger. If God will allow Satan to take all the people in Nigeria and he has only 153. Can't you see that that's nonsense? That's the reason those of you that are reading Revelation that are flying up and down. Revelation from here. Trans, this and that. Instead of listening to the man of God, you are listening to Revelation. Revelation that is contrary to scriptures. God has only 153. Which means that even in the watchman, we may not even have anybody. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Tell yourself the truth, young woman, God is interested in you. Young man, God is interested in you. Give up the thing that the devil will find inside you. Give them up. And know the truth and walk with the truth. Okay? Yes, sir. When you are on the street, walk with the truth. 
Know the scripture that says he is near that justified man. You are in the bus, he is near. Nearer than your shadow. Did you hear? I said nearer than your shadow. It is knowledge. It is knowledge that saves you. When you are ignorant, you can suffer as a result of ignorance. And yet you are a child of God. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Now, knowledge saves you. He is near that justifies me. Nearer than your shadow. In that bus, God is there. Yes, In that yard, God is there. No matter what is happening there, tell yourself the truth and walk with the truth. Yes, Are you going to do that? Yes, sir. Change your mind. Yes, sir. Tell yourself, I carry a changed mind. I go back from church with a changed mind. Pray again. Pray again. I must make the rapture. I am supposed to make the rapture. I must make it. I must make it. My children must make it. My husband must make it. My wife must make it. I will pray. I will do everything that is in my power to ensure that everybody that is around me makes the rapture. Praise the Lord. Take this homework. Take it, this homework, and, and then go home with it. As you go to there, make, your, make, your, make a habit of praying for everybody. Praying for your husband, praying for your wife, praying for your children, praying for your relatives, praying for your neighbors. Did you hear me? Make a habit. Or praying because if you are praying for me, you will not criticize me. <laughs> if you are praying for your husband, you will not criticize your husband. Your mind will be, you will develop a sound mind toward him. Did you hear? Yes, that is the truth. If you are praying for your children, you will not uh, demolish them. You will be, as you are praying, your heart is opening to loving them. The same thing with uh, children to parents. Am I right? Yes, if you are praying. So, now, do that. Now the next thing, the assignment I give to you, who has heard about Enugu State on the hill? Uh, only a few people raising their hands. So you have not heard? I give you an assignment. Pray to God day in, day out that it should be a colossus of, a, of an outing. Watch my word. What did I say? A colossus of an outing. Tell it to the Lord every day. And let's see what God is going to do. It's an outing among outings. We are going to hear more on that in the very shortly from my desk. I bow down your head and I pray. Thank you, Holy One. Holy One of Israel. And Holy One of the Watchman. Holy One of His people. Lord, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you because you are our God. And that's all. Any person saying otherwise is foolish. Doesn't understand anything. God is the God of his people. Jesus is our senior brother. And he's our savior. And he's our Lord. And he's our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our guide. Our comforter. We belong to the Lord. We don't belong to the prince of this world. Lord, this is my confession on the behalf of myself and the rest of the people in the watchman. All these children, all these people are my children, spiritual children. That is where I stand because that is the truth. No more, no less. Great Father in heaven, as many as accept that, let it be to them like that. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lord, I do not need to talk too much before you begin to do things in the lives of the people. All I need is to speak the truth. And once I speak the truth, Lord, and they accept the truth, truth will begin to bring out what it should bring out. Yeah. Because God is the embodiment of truth. He is the rock. His work is perfect. All his ways are just miss and judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Lord, you know that 
all the people that are here, you know them one by one. I do not need to introduce them to you. My father, I will need that they be introduced to me one by one. Because I only know a few people by name. And I know a few people by their faces. But you know everyone. And you know what the problem is in the mind, in the places from where they came. You know the present economy. You know what each and every person is grappling with. Precious Father, but as far as I am concerned and as far as God is concerned, you are in charge. Yes. And being in charge, you will not allow them to pine out. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. As I am speaking, you are walking. Yes, as I am speaking, you are walking. Yes, you are walking now. Yes, and you are walking as they walk out. Yes, and they go home. Yes, or tomorrow you are walking. Yes, the next day you are walking. Yes, Throughout the rest of the week you are walking. Yes, In the course of the month you are walking. Yes, in the course of the year you are walking. Why do I say that? I say that because the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ said, My Father walketh hither to, and I walk. And you are not sleeping. You are not dull. The devils are walking. And so, Lord, I ask, if one third of the angels that rebelled, your angels are of innumerable company, and then one third rebelled and became as demons and follow the Lucifer and they are walking night and day day and night, month after month Lord I want to ask what are the two thoughts doing they are sleeping Lord they are not sleeping they are at work Lord and they are at work in this church they are at work following the people the angels of the Lord encamp around them that fear the Lord to deliver them in the bus they are there on the road they are there in the yard they are there those that have been found in the places where they appear to be hedged in the angels are there and they will experience that in the week they will experience that in the course of this month and they will come back and give testimony that the man of god said the angels are with us thank you my father that is what must happen what i say must happen what I declare is put in place because I didn't declare it by my mind. I declared it by the spirit of the Lord. God is with his people even in this present economy and the present circumstance and the present circumstance. My father and my God, I want to tell you Lord in glory that, oh precious father precious father I want to thank you I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Lord, you know that I was talking to two young men that are doctors at the Rock of Ages yesterday. And the children of, of, of the man of God. And I was saying, with all the resources of God, all the plants that you have in the whole world, and all the things you put in the ground, so there is not any mechanism that you can use out of all the resources to heal people that have cancer. Who can tell me that? Lord, I want to say that uh, everything that is in the world can become your agent. You can use leaves. You can use the back of the tree. You can use anything to heal any person. You can use your angels. They will come out from dream. They will come out from fellowship in a dream. And the person will become a different person. Lord, these are things that must manifest. Right now, Lord, I set those things in motion. Amen. By the word of authority. Amen. Lord, I set them in motion. Amen. By the word of authority. Amen. You have said, if I speak it, it is guaranteed. Amen. You said it unto Peter. Right now, Peter is no more here. Yes. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind is bound in heaven. Amen. Whatsoever you lose is losing heaven. Now Peter is no more. And the gospel work must continue. And the principle is continuing. I am an apostle. And therefore great father in heaven. All these people that agree with me. Whatsoever I declare concerning them is what happens. Precious master. Precious master. If any one of them says I am the servant. I am the child of this man. That person must not die premature death. 
In the name of Jesus. This is my declaration. Because I don't die premature death. Thank you my father. What belongs to father belongs to children. But whether they be men or women. Whether they be boys or girls. Whether they come from an ambassador of Ogun State. It doesn't matter. Precious father. What belongs to me belongs to them. In the name of Jesus. You know that somebody that has understanding will just be saying, uh -huh, okay now, this sickness will not kill me because the one that came upon my father didn't kill him. And what belongs to my father belongs to me. The protection that he's enjoying is what I enjoy. Ah, hunger will not kill me because hunger did not kill him. Hallelujah. That is how to be a child of God. Thank you, my father. All the people that have gotten this uh, element of truth this morning, this afternoon, Lord, and they are applying it. Lord, I say, he shall follow them like that. Yeah. Without fear, this is the law. He follows them like that. The heavens have declared it. Amen. They have said it with their mouths. Amen. And because it is truth, now that truth is holding. Amen. And nobody, my father, from the heavens, since the angels cannot counter it, and the Lord Jesus Christ cannot counter it, and will not, and the Spirit of God will not say otherwise. Every other person, Lord, that is saying otherwise is bunkum. Lord in glory. The devil, if he says otherwise, is a liar. We don't believe lies. We believe the truth. Let the truth work for the people. Yeah. As they walk out of this place, let the goodies that I'm enjoying at your hand, let the protection, Amen. let the longevity, Amen. let the tenacity, Amen. let the faith, Amen. let the insight, Amen. let everything that is of God, that will make a person make the rapture. Let it be the Lord of each and every person. In the name of Jesus. I want you to say all of you so shall it be. Say it again. So it is. Say it. Say it again. The fourth, fifth time. The sixth time. And now the seventh time.